Greetings, Blue Eddie is back with yet another model in their mid-sized budget power station range as a direct upgrade to their aging AC-180. They call it the Elite 100 V2, and it packs the same 1800 watt inverter and one kilowatt hour battery of its predecessor, but in a much smaller and lighter package that's one hand tossable and claims some amazing recharge times, like only 70 minutes to fully top up from zero using solar. But is it any good? Let's find out. First things first, the name. So don't be confused here because there never was an Elite 100 V1. For some reason, Bluetti is considering all the models in their new Elite lineup to be direct replacements for older AC models, giving them a version 2 moniker. In this case, the Elite 100 V2 replaces the AC 180, which they consider V1. It doesn't really make any sense to me either, but let's move on. Inside the Elite 100 packs a 1,024 watt hour LFP battery rated 4,000 cycles to 80% or more than 10 years worth of daily cycling. As for size and weight, this is where the new Elite model really shines over the older AC 180. This new model is literally 35% smaller and 30% lighter and only consumes 17 liters of space. It's approximately 13 by 9 by 10 inches, clocks in at only 25 pounds, and with its built-in handle, makes it one hand tossable. Pretty impressive for a product that can run virtually any kitchen appliance that plugs directly into a 15 amp wall socket. Now as for the display, it's Blue Eddie's bigger and brighter color LCD that they use in virtually every new model. And it's easy to see from virtually every angle, even from where I'm sitting, I can clearly read it. It contains 21 pieces of information such as input and output watts, time to charge discharge, battery percent with icon, and so on. As for the inverter, it's an 1800 watt pure sign with four 20 amp outlets. Of note, the Elite 100 surge ability has increased to 3600 watts over the 2400 watts of the outgoing model. We're going to test that here in a moment. Now, as for charging, this is again where the Elite impresses. It offers the standard three ways to charge, but speeds have dramatically increased from the previous model. When charging from AC power, you have three speeds available, silent, standard, and turbo. In turbo, it can charge at 1200 watts for topping up the battery to 80% in 45 minutes. Pretty sweet. Silent and standard will do it at half speed and save the battery while keeping the fans quiet. Bluetti has also packed a massive 1000 watt MPPT solar controller into this tiny box that can handle from 12 to 60 volts of solar up to 20 amps through the front mounted XT60 connector. This means you can fully charge the Elite from zero to full in only 70 minutes flat, assuming 1,000 watts of solar is coming in. Rewind just two years ago and fast solar charging took three to four hours. Now we're down to a full charge while eating your lunch. It also charges from 12 and 24 volts like any other power station at eight amps or 100 and 200 watts respectively. But what if you have a raw 12 or 24 volt battery or a power supply that can handle more than eight amps? Well, inside of Blue Eddie's app, you can unlock the full 20 amp charging at 12 volts, letting you charge at a crazy 240 watts. Of course, you don't want to use this setting if you're plugged into a car port or you'll blow the fuse. And this is mostly for charging from higher amp sources, such as a battery. As for 12 volt outputs, they offer three and they're all regulated at 13.4 volts. You have the standard car port lighter socket rated at 10 amps and a pair of 5521 barrel plugs rated at eight amps if you're only using one or five amps if you're using both. And kudos to Bluetti for bringing back the 5521 ports. I thought they were going the way of the dodo. This is how I prefer to hook up most of my 12 volt appliances through those barrel plugs, as it seems to be a more stable connection. And I always have the worst of luck with those carport plugs. Either they fall apart in your hand or they start blowing fuses. As for USB outputs, the Elite 100 also rocks some impressive USB. You get a pair of USB-C power delivery outputs, but one of them uses the new USB power delivery version 3.1 protocol, which means it will charge at up to 140 watts. The other is a standard 100 watt output. And there's also a pair of fixed five volt USB-A ports, good for charging up your dinosaurs. Like all current Blue Eddy models, the Elite 100 also supports Blue Eddy's fantastic remote access app that works with both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so you can control your power station from anywhere or nowhere if you decide to turn off the wireless transmitters. 
a feature you're gonna find on all the new models. So if you hate wireless or you're in an environment where wireless transmissions are forbidden, you can simply go into the hidden settings inside the power station itself and turn them off. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Now, as for the warranty, Blue Eddy offers a five-year manufacturer's warranty for the Elite 100. And of course, I took the Elite 100 V2 here into my secret laboratory where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it. And of course, that means a double-fisted battery capacity test. Results for the DC battery capacity test, it scored 869 out of 1,024 watt hours for a perfectly average 85%. As for the AC battery capacity test, it scored 880 out of 1024 for a slightly better 86%. These results are on par with virtually all other Blue Eddy products and are considered average for the industry. Now I did perform a phantom load or parasitic drain test. Now we did both AC and DC tests over 12 hours. The DC consumption test, it used 70 watt hours over 12 hours or about 140 watt hours over 24 hours. We left the AC inverter on for 12 hours and it consumed about 131 watt hours or 262 over 24 hours. These are all very solid results for both AC and DC. So if you left this inverter on with nothing plugged in, it would totally kill the battery in just under four days, making this a very good choice for running smaller loads for longer periods, such as refrigerators or computers during an outage. If you do the math, it works out to 11 watts of wasted power at idle. And this is an above average result for this size inverter, meaning it's a bit more efficient than a similar size competitor. Now, I'm always asked how long stuff's gonna run on these power stations, so compensating for usable capacity, which we just figured out, you can pause this chart I'm going to put on screen. You can see approximately how long common appliances will run on this unit. Now for the results of the testing. Sine wave check under load, it was 118 volts at 60 hertz, a pass. Under the inverter capacity test, we're able to reach 2600 watts for just under five seconds, and that's a pass. Cooling ability, the heat soak test, we ran it for five minutes at 1800 watts, that passed. Inverter fan noise, it recorded 47 decibels at one meter. The 15 amp saw test, it passed. Now, as for the 5000 BTU AC test. Oh, Houston, we have a problem. You can hear that warbling, that is not good. That means it is not running the compressor properly. And in fact, we're getting alternating wattage here on the display. This actually should be about 500 watts or so. It's actually pulling way more than it should because it's not running the compressor properly. So let's turn that off. So that means that's a fail. This will not run a window air conditioner. So if you're planning on running a window air conditioner with this unit, it's not gonna happen. Now this one that I have is mechanical, 5,000 BTUs. You're not gonna get anything smaller than this. It's gonna pull less watts than this. This runs about 300 watts whenever the compressor actually kicks on and runs. The fact that it's pulling 12, 1300 watts and the compressor is not quite running properly means it would quickly destroy this air conditioner if I did let it run. Now I've done this test three times now, two more times off camera. It's not running the compressor and the air conditioner, so it's just a fail for that test. So I know you guys are gonna already ask me, what about power lifting mode? If I turn power lifting mode on, will it run the air conditioner? So I turned it on in the app and I will go ahead and try the compressor again. Let's see what happens. Let's watch the screen because it should just go up real quick and come back down to like three or 400 watts if the compressor works properly. All right, and I'm doing this on low coal, so I'm gonna give it the best chance I can to get it to start up. No, it doesn't make any difference at all whether or not it's on. So power lifting on or off doesn't make any difference. In fact, I'll just go ahead and turn it back off. I turned it back off. As you can see, it doesn't make any difference in running the compressor. So that unfortunately was a fail. Now the solar degenerator or an 1800 watt heat gun, the solar degenerator. Okay, full blast. Pulls about 1400 watts, no problem. That passed. Now the max charge rate from AC power, it runs 1200 watts in turbo mode and 600 watts in both standard and quiet modes. Now they do claim 12 to 60 volts at 20 amps for the XT60 solar input. As tested, we were able to use 12 to 60 volts at 20 amps, no problem. At 12 volts, it was able to charge at 230 watts unlocked. At 24 volts, it was able to charge at 460 watts unlocked. 48 volts, 1000 watts, and at the max 60 volts, 1000 watts. 
As for the fan noise and AC max charging mode, it was a whisper quiet 45 decibels. What about simultaneous charging? That means charging from solar and AC at the same time. Well, this supports it. As you can see, I'm charging right now. Maximum solar, 1000 watts, 60 volts from solar. And at the same time, I am running it in turbo mode plugged into AC power. Now it doesn't charge any faster. It still maxes out at 1200 watts, but it uses what's called solar priority. So it actually takes solar instead of AC power. And I can tell over there my load, 230 watts from AC and 1000 watts from solar. So it does support it with solar priority. Now for the UPS or pass-through test, Bluity claims a 10 millisecond switchover time from the wall to the inverter. So when the power goes out, it should leave your computers and everything running. Place your bets. I'm gonna turn off the power. Let's see if the computer locks up or shuts down. It should not, but let's find out. Ready? Three, two, one. Okay, no problem. It stopped charging, but yet it's still supplying power to the computer. Let's go ahead and re apply the power from the wall and you can see it is now back to charging in turbo mode plus supplying power do it again three two one no problems whatsoever and of course it worked perfectly fine on my computer that was a pass and that means blue eddy does use a backup ups relay in this this is not an online ups system as for dc output max rate it was able to pull 10 amps at 11 and a half volts, and that's a pass. 12 volt output is regulated at 13.4 volts. USB checks, this has two USB power delivery outputs. One's a 140 watt, which is the new 3.1 standard, and then we have the older 100 watt output port. This one's charging this power bank at 140, and this one's charging it at 100. You can see there, 240 watts. 137 watts. And this one currently says 90 watts. That also was a pass. Musician's favorite amp interference test is where we determine, does the inverter output noise or anything that can be picked up by an amplifier? In other words, is it clean or dirty? So place your bets. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the inverter on. This is all cranked up with nothing plugged in. Three, two, one. Sounds very clean to me. So this being this size and being this clean means that you can absolutely take this on the road with you. If you wanna play down at the beach or on the boardwalk, something this size can power a small amp and it sounds perfectly clean. So thumbs up, Blue Eddie. Okay, in the manual, it says right here that if you hold down the AC and DC buttons simultaneously, you'll go into the special settings menu, which allows you to turn certain things off and on. So. What we're looking for is oh, P06, which is Bluetooth, let's turn that off, and P07, which is Wi-Fi, let's turn that off. Okay, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is now turned off. And yes, in case you don't know, pretty much all modern Blue Eddies in the last year or two have these secret soft settings, and they're always gonna be mentioned in the user manual. You can control things such as inverter frequency, the charging mode, power lifting mode, eco mode, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. You can do all that without the app. Electromagnetic interference test, with it powered on, it scored only four to 10, which is great. DC system turned on was a moderate 60, and we turned on the AC, it was high at just above 80. So the Blue Eddy Elite 100 V2 passed all tests except for the AC test where it was unable to start the compressor on my 5000 BTU air conditioner. Everything else was a double thumbs up. One last thing I wanna mention is something that's only available in the app in the advanced section, it's called system switch recovery. What it does is it allows the Blue Eddy to automatically turn anything back on that was turned off when the battery died. So say you had the AC inverter or DC turned on and the battery ran out and died. Old Blue Eddies back in the day, when you hooked up solar or grid power to them or recharged them, wouldn't come back on by themselves. This one will now come back on by itself, along with the Apex and the other newer Blue Eddies. I kind of forgot to mention it in the last few videos. It's a very common question. Um, pretty much all the newer Blue Eddies support this feature. Again, it's called System Switch Recovery. It's only in the app. So what do I think about the Elite 100 V2? I think Blue Eddy has knocked it out of the park again with this mid-sized budget model. It's smaller, lighter, less expensive than the outgoing model, yet has more features and better power delivery. I also like the fact that all the inputs and outputs on this model are now on the front 
with the exception of the single AC input on the side. So if you aren't AC charging, you can slip this thing into a cubby hole in your RV or tent or whatever. You have access to everything from the front. I really like that. Also great is the move to the common XT60 connector for the solar port, which is far more robust than the old barrel plugs that Bloody used to use. Now, the only surprise, like I mentioned before, was that the 3600 watt surge wasn't able to start my little 5000 watt BTU air conditioner behind me, which is a real surprise because that thing runs on an 800 watt gas generator. It ran everything else just fine, but the compressors, I guess, are a different monster and they often don't start without a soft start built in. In any case, if you need to run a window air conditioner unit, you're gonna to wanna to look at a larger Blue Eddy anyway, because you're only gonna get a couple of hours on this tiny little battery, even if it did start up. Product price, the Elite 100 V2 retails for $5.99, which is only 60 cents per watt hour and a great deal by itself. However, for Blue Eddy's Amazon Prime Day sale, which starts from now through July 11th, the price drops all the way down to, now I hope you're sitting down, all the way down to $3.99. That's a ridiculous 40 cents per watt hour. Now that's generic fly-by-night brand pricing, not something you would expect from a top name brand offering you a five-year warranty. So I'm gonna provide a bit of advice on anyone who wants the new Elite 100 and nab one now instead of waiting because at this price, and expected sales volume for this holiday, it could very easily sell out. And if you're interested, the link and discount code is gonna be in the description below. I'm also gonna put a link here at the bottom of the screen you could type in, along with a QR code you could scan on your mobile device if you're watching me on TV, and a lot of you are. And that's gonna take you on over to the Blue Eddy store page where you can check out the Elite 100 V2. Thanks for watching and until next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box.